today is um, about a uh, cosmetic uh, topic actually. Uh, it's a lit, uh, little bit academic. I will try uh, to make it more uh, uh, clinical oriented so that you will get familiar with it. Uh, it's about uh, gingival melanin depigmentation. It's a histological and clinical animal and the human study using Erbimia laser by different power settings. Uh, okay, uh, melanin hyperpigmentation. Um, it's cosmetic problem when uh, the patient suffers from gummy smiles. Like uh, we see here, it's a, top, uh, it's a typical uh, melanin uh, hyperpigmentation. Um, we can see this uh, black brownish color on the tash gingiva, almost. Mm, uh, I want to go briefly uh, through histology. Uh, we know that um, the epithelium uh, contains basal cell layers and uh, the melanocytes are there. Uh, they are about um, uh, less than 7% of the basal cell layers and they produce uh, uh, the melanin. Okay, uh, chemically, um, uh, melanin is soluble, insoluble in water, consists of carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur. Treatment history. Many um, uh, authors tried to report what they did for, to remove these uh, hyperpigmented tissues or the, uh, this color. Uh, they started a long time ago with uh, applying phenol, phenol and alcohol. Uh, and uh, gingivectomy, they tried gingivectomy by many ways, of course, and they tried free gingival grafts. And uh, finally, lasers, because uh, lasers uh, are not um, used for a long time in dentistry. And uh, through lasers, uh, there are many wavelengths. We call them wavelengths, actually, because uh, the names are not uh, so important. Uh, the most important thing is the uh, the wavelength, because any uh, reaction or any uh, light tissue interaction uh, is based on the wavelength of the, uh, the laser, the light. Okay, okay diode lasers, uh, they have uh, many wavelengths of uh, diode lasers are used in dentistry, NDAG laser, erbium chromium YSGG laser, CO2 laser, and finally, uh, erbium YAG laser. Our research now is about erbiumia laser. This is the this is the machine of erbiumia laser. We can see this is the erbiumia laser here. This machine contains two lasers actually, NDA laser and erbiumia laser. They are different uh, devices, but they put it in one device here. Okay, back to the literature. If you search in PubMed to compare uh, lasers uh, when you make depigmentation, you will find um, many, actually, articles about that. But they treat the issue by, not by wavelengths, only by, uh, or power settings, they only by names, like comparison between diode laser and erbiumiag laser, comparison between NDAG laser and CO2 laser, but uh, we have, and again, we have only one study which we can say that it's a uh, high quality uh, study. We mean RCT, randomized clinical trial, uh, which compare uh, the diode laser and erbiumag lasers in the treatment of gingiva melanin pigmentation. Uh, but we see not only in this study, in all the studies about lasers, that there's very big problem that they don't measure the pulse duration. And the pulse duration is very important. They only say, okay, we apply one joule from diode laser and one joule from, let's say, erbiumiag laser. And they forget that there is something called pulse duration which affect and which produce the pulse peak power. Like if we apply one joule from erbiumiag laser with one millisecond, 
pulse duration, because we know that lasers, some of them consist of pulses. Then we got, we got, we got 1,000 watts. If we apply one joule per 0 0.1 milliseconds, we'll get 10,000 watts. And in the, in the studies, if you go to in the literature, you will see, okay, comparing one joule from diode laser with one joule by erbimag laser. So it's, it will be, uh, it will cause very uh, big uh, mistake, actually. Then we started with animal study because if we want to be, uh, to, uh, to be accurate and to produce some suggestions or to suggest some wavelengths and uh, power settings for the human, we have to start with the animal. Objectives, to, de to determine the speed of removing pigmentations from pigmented tissue that was measured by stopwatch. Why speed? Why I started with speed, actually, because it's very important. I have a laser machine. It's suggested by the manufacturer that you can go by definite power setting. When I started with it, uh, the patient took about uh, three hours to remove the depigmentation, the pigmented tissue, sorry. To measure the controllability, because when you use the laser, you have, it has to be very controllable. Otherwise, you will harm other tissues like bone or teeth. Carbonized area, because if you have carbonized area, you will um, mess it with uh, the melanin pigmentation. So you will not know if you remove the whole pigmented tissues or it is carbonized or something else. Histology just to see uh, the effect of the underlying tissues. And the, ef the, efficien the efficiency of laser, of treatment, depending on the previous objectives. Study design, it was ex vivo animal trial. A study sample, 24 biopsies from, uh, taken from pigmented gingiva or sheep. Uh, 24 biopsies mean 24 uh, power settings, different power settings. Procedure, as you see, it's a cosmetic problem. Uh, it is, uh, this is the melanin. And this is the handpiece, which delivers uh, the, um, the, the laser light. Power settings, we focus on pulse duration. There is four pulse durations in our machine, 0 0.1 millisecond. 0 0.3, 0 0.6, and 1 milliseconds. And it's called micro short pulse, short pulse, long pulse, very long pulse. In the same time, we have now fluence, which is energy per area. We have six power settings, so in total we have 24. We measured them all, we made some mapping just to um, to see what's, what's the effect of uh, different power settings. <coughs> and these are the ablated uh, areas. We took biopsy. Okay. Uh, the issue is little subjective, actually, because we, we are measuring things which are we cannot define them by numbers. So we are trying to make the subjective things more objective, so to be more scientific. Okay, so we made scores. Okay, I don't want to go to details by scores. Uh, for controllability, it's better than saying if it's, it is controllable or little controllable. We define them by numbers. And carbonize, carbonization score, and everything like this. And we made some graphs. Again, it's confusing to explain all this, but I will give you the conclusion and uh, results. We measured in the histology the dead zone under the laser because we want to see what's the effect of this erbimag laser. Okay. The conclusion, actually we ex excluded fluences one 
0.3 joule per square centimeter because it's very slow and this is what was recommended by, uh, by the manufacturer and uh, 6 joule per square centimeter because it's very harmful. Uh, it seems that 4 joule per square centimeter for VLP, LP, this is the different uh, pulse durations, are the most effective and safe for settings. It is suitable to start human study to assess scientific based parameters for depigmentation by Airbnb laser. And now we started the human study. Depending on the four power settings, we see that they are the best power settings to, to use. Again, the objectives, but here are a little different because they are clinical objectives. Uh, the speed of removing, we determined definite area for each patient and we measure the speed. Okay. To measure the amount of carbonized, this is the carbonized area. This sometimes you, uh, you cannot differentiate uh, with the, the melanin uh, pigmented uh, tissues. We have to measure the pain now because uh, it's important because we do it without anesthesia. Uh, healing process. For uh, we try to make it one week after treat, uh, treatment because we have many patients. Uh, some of them we could uh, follow up them, but uh, almost they uh, they don't come come back again. Uh, to compare the efficiency depending on the previous objectives, materials and methods, prospective human study, 32 patients with uh, melanin pigmented upper gingiva attempt to remove it. Of course, we um, we uh, choose the four power settings. We divided them to four groups. Uh, procedures. We adjust first power settings. We have four power settings only. We have two pulse duration, a very long pulse and short pulse. This is what we choose. This is the screen from the machine. This is the joule per square centimeter. Of course you have to adjust the hand piece that it's only two square, uh, to, so that it is four joule per square centimeter. And this is the hertz or uh, the frequency, not the frequency of the light, the wavelength. This is the fr frequency of the pulses. So it is 10 pulses per second. And this is the power. And these are the pulse durations. This is the hand piece. I told, as I told you, it's Erbimiac and NDIAG laser. Okay, this is the ablation time. We define this area for every patient. Three, multiply by three surface area. It is two square millimeters, every dot here, every spot, sorry. And this is after ablation. We took biopsy from from each, and this after operation. Of course, questionnaires to see the pain and comfort, discomfort. And then we saw it after, uh, uh, we checked after one week. We start to make the graphs Bleed for bleeding, pain, satisfaction, ablation time. Yeah, as we see, this is uh, after one hour before one hour, after one week, one month. Okay, uh, conclusion. Of course, we didn't finish the whole study yet. We didn't go through the histological part yet. Uh, so there are many uh, issues to study. But until now, uh, it seems that four power settings used in this study are effective and safe. We can recommend each one of them depending on the preferred treatment objective. Uh, laser is safe and effective in depigmentation when it's applied carefully. Thank you for your attention.